Composites have a couple of functions. One, to reduce the amount of drafting that we have to do. And two, to graphically represent a building material or a composition of a number of building materials in a skin. So basically it's a symbolic representation of building elements. So the first thing we're going to do is build a composite and then we're going to explore some interesting use for the tool. So first of all, to create a composite, I go to Options, Element Attributes, Composites. This palette opens up here. Now first of all, we're going to create a new wall, a new wall composite. So I'm just going to grab any composite, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter which one it is. I'm going to duplicate that and then I'm going to rename that. Just going to call it 240 brick veneer. Then push OK. So first of all, I can define the top line or the outside line of the composite. This is the reference line side. Then I'm going to click on the next skin down, choose a hatching. I can't see all of these quite here, but I can also create a hatch. I'm going to select a brickwork hatch, change the thickness of that skin to 110 millimeters, which is how thick it is anyway. I can also define the next line. I'm also going to leave that black. Then I'm going to insert a skin. I'm going to select the next skin. This is the skin I want to edit. I can either select it here or through here. Then I'm going to select the brickwork and I'm going to change this to airspace. And I'm going to change it to 40 millimeters thick. Then I need to insert another skin and depending on where I select it and depending on how you want to draw it I'm just going to change that to a black fill and I'm going to change that to 90 millimeter thick and we can see this figure here is updating this is now giving me the thickness of 240 so it's the overall thickness of the composite I'm creating I'm going to insert one more skin which will be plaster I'm just going to use that fill for the time being and I'm going to make the skin only 10 millimeters that means it'll be 250 millimeters. But when I want to dimension it, I only want to dimension the core. So I just deselect that so it won't dimension the cut stone or the plaster layer. So I also have to check something on a dimensioning dialog box. But that's how we go about it. Now that becomes a composite that's available for walls. So if I select a wall, if I now click Control A or Apple A and over here I choose my 240 brick veneer which should be down near the end there's my 240 brick veneer there and you'll notice that none of the 3D modeling attributes have changed only the 2D attributes now push OK and there's my composite wall the more I zoom in you can see the detail there just going to go downstairs now and do the same thing. So go Control or Apple A, select them all, change to the composite that I just created. You can see it come up just there. And so check it and push OK. So now that looks the same as well. Now if I open the cross section, that will now update and it will look as we want it to look. One thing that we should take notice of when we're creating composites is that I'll just select it here is that these three buttons here I can actually make a composite available for just walls, slabs or roofs or any combination of those put together. This particular one I wanted to create just for walls. Now let's say I just created another composite. It might be for upper floor joint. So I'm just going to duplicate this composite and I'm going to call this one upper floor joist 300 mil. So first of all, 
I'm going to want it available just for slabs, so I'm going to deselect the wall icon. So the top skin, I'm just going to want a timber skin. Click on wood, and I'm going to need this 20 mil, even though it's usually 19 mil. Next, I'm going to create some upper floor joists. I'm just going to find the stud framing fill. And this could be 270 millimeters thick. So that takes us to 390 at the moment. Then underneath, we should have a plaster skin. So I'm just, I just need to delete this skin here. So I'm just going to select the skin that I want deleted and push clear skin. Now we can see we have a total of a 300 thick composite. Now if I open the cross section and I select the slab that I want to change the composite for, I select it. Now I'm going to find upper floor joist 300 which is the last one there. And there we go there. So that's also going to reduce our drafting. So now I'm going to use the same principle and do one for the roof. Now I'm just going to duplicate now I'm just going to duplicate this composite and I'm going to call it roof structure. I'm going to make the top one airspace. Make it 25 millimeters thick. Then I need to add a skin. So I'm going to select this skin, make it available for roofs, deselect the slabs. And to use the stud framing fill once again. And I'm going to change this to just 35 mil. And finally, I need to insert one more skin. So this needs to be timber. So I might just make an airspace skin. This can be the top cord. Let's make it 120 thick. Now we can see that it's 180 thick altogether. Then. I've already selected the roof. Now select the roof here in the cross section. And here I select the new composite and push OK. And so as mentioned before, the composites are there to assist our drafting and give us symbolic representations of materials we might use. So those composites don't have to be used just for just for walls. You can come up with your own innovative ideas to for all sorts of building schemes.